Hi guys, welcome to Yichuan Park. In this video, I'm going to answer a common question. Can we move in Zhanzhuang? It's said that students were not allowed in Master Wang Xiangzai's original teaching. They were required to keep still in Zhanzhuang. Many of Master Wang's students, who later became Yichuan masters, kept the same way to teach Zhanzhuang. As far as I know, Masters in some of today's Yichuan academic school would judge students totally wrong if they try to move when learning Zhanzhuang. Is it really that bad if we move in Zhanzhuang? Some of Master Wang's students who later also became Yichuan masters provided another method to teach Zhanzhuang. 大动不如小动,小动不如不动,不动之动,乃深深不已之动。Big movement is less good than small movement. Small movement is less good than motionless movement. The motionless movement is endless vigorous. I shot three videos to show you guys the three different sizes of movement. Each video is the 30 minute time lapse Zhanzhuang practice of expanding and bracing stance. In all the videos, I do the same practice. I visualize the mental E such as pulling a tree upward or downward pushing it forward or pulling it backward, squeezing it inward or outward, and etc. And I do the exact physical work with all my body parts and muscles. In order to do the physical activities corresponding with the mental visualization, beginners tend to do the big movement because they have very limited ability to balance their E and force. For example, they really need to move up arms when pulling up the imaginary tree. After the practice for a period of time, advanced beginners will be able to reduce the size of movement because they have better ability to balance their E and force. For the same example, they used to move up arms for 5 cm in order to pull up the imaginary tree for 5 cm. They now can pull up the tree for 5 cm by moving up arms only for like 1 cm. After the practice for a longer period of time, Advanced practitioners are able to minimize the size of the movement. Ultimately, they don't need to do external movements to correspond with their E. They have very strong ability to balance their E and force. They are doing so-called motionless movement. For the same example, they can pull up the tree for as much as they want while keeping arms still. Let's mark them by stage 1, stage 2, stage 3. Many places require students to keep still, in which case, students are entering stage 3 on their first day. It's a hard approach. The worst scenario is that the extreme stiffness and pains in the muscles and joints burn out one's interest and enthusiasm. They drop out in the trial. On this channel, we are taking the other method. I want you guys to start with stage 1. If you still have doubts because you were told this was not right, please hear the following. I hope I can convince you. Most of Master Wang's students were skilled and experienced martial artists. Some of them were even professionals or masters already. It was easier for them to advance their level by standing in stillness. However, some of his students didn't have any martial art experience. It was those men who later developed this method for beginners who have zero experience. The original theories of Yi Quan have been well preserved, but evolved too. The teaching methodologies are also advancing. Let me put it in this way. Master Wang let his students go to grade 1 on their first day of school. Some second generation Yi Quan masters created a preschool stage and a kindergarten stage for their students to start with. Students would go to grade 1 either way, it's just the second approach is easier and probably make more sense. If you agree with this approach, you might have this question. I will start with big movement. How or when do I qualify from stage 1 to stage 2, then stage 2 to stage 3? It depends. I've shared many kinds of stances and many kinds of E in the previous videos. I want you guys to stick with these exercises and do not mind too much about the size of your movement. The only requirement is number one, 
keeping the stances right, number two, keeping the E real. Let's assume you practice them for one hour every day, five to six days a week. You probably need three to six months to do the big movement very well. Then you will most likely spontaneously reach stage two. If you have learned Zhuang by your instructor or by yourself for quite some time, you would need less time. But I strongly recommend that you treat yourself as a fresh beginner, take more time and practice stage one patiently. If you didn't reach the stage two spontaneously by the six months, what you could do is number one, continue to do the big movement. It's fine if you did the big movement for one or two years. Number two, deliberately reduce the size of your movement. Just try not to move too much, but visualizing the same degree of E. After the consistent practice of stage two for three to six months, you should be able to do the minimum movement. In which case, people will see you moving only if they watch closely. From the minimum movement to the motionless movement, it will be most likely spontaneous too. It's fine if you couldn't do the motionless movement in a long time. Being able to do the minimum movement is a big milestone. I say spontaneous quite a lot. You probably don't believe the spontaneous thing, do you? Trust me, it's because you haven't done enough practices. Hard work is the only trick in Zhang study. The size of movement we are talking about so far is the external movement. Some may wonder about the internal movement. How are they connected? Does the internal movement have something to do with moving from stage to stage? The external movement and the internal movement are naturally connected. We don't separate them in this method. In stage one, the external movement is big. There's basically non-internal movement in the beginning, but there will be minimum internal movement at the end of this stage. In stage two, the external movement is small. There is some internal movement. Your internal organs start to move automatically, but not remarkably. In stage three, the external movement is none. There is a remarkable internal movement. All your internal organs move thoroughly. That's why it's said that the motionless movement is endless vigorous. A few words for the internal movement on stage three. You probably need to meet a qualified instructor to fully understand it and to be able to do it perfectly. The internal movement is different from the external movement. It's like wriggling. I sincerely advise you not to overthink of the internal movement. Focus on the external movement and let the internal movement find itself. I'm very glad if you are still watching this video and congratulations to you. You are about to get the mystery of Zhan Zhuang for free. Let's talk about the two methods we mentioned in the beginning of this video. Method one, you start with stage three on your first day. You would most likely do Zhan Zhuang with neither external movement nor internal movement. In which case, the type of Zhan Zhuang is called an empty stance or a dead stance. It's so inefficient. If your instructor didn't have a chance to tell you all of the above before you dropped out, all of your work could be just a wasted effort. Method two, you start with stage one. You let your nerves and muscles work in gradual process. This method is so spectacular. The internal movement would be automatically involved since your first day. This type of Zhan Zhuang is called active stances. Stances were introduced with how to do them actively in all my videos. The original purpose of Zhan Zhuang serves for combat. In terms of the combat effectiveness, it is the internal movement that determines the efficiency. In stage one, it is least efficient. In stage two, it is more efficient. In stage three, it is most efficient. However, 
The significant health benefits of Zanzhuang goes along with exercises since the first day. We shouldn't aggressively aim for stage three because there's always health effectiveness on all three stages. You should make your own plan based on your age and health conditions. Your body will achieve the health effectiveness prior to the combat effectiveness. 欲速则不达